This exercise is very important for submarine escape and rescue. This is a massive amount of effort and expertise. This is really important because we have these submarine crews and we need to keep them safe. It is very important that all our submarine operations are based on the ability to get our sailors back home. Submarine rescue is a humanitarian job, so working with all countries is very important. Time is definitely of the essence. We help each other. If something goes wrong, we will be able to go out and rescue our submariners. Dynamic Monarch is the most challenging submarine rescue exercise in the world, bringing together members from across the NATO alliance, honing their skills in this very specialised area. For the first time in nearly 10 years, it's been held in cold waters off the coast of Norway. These are the teams that are called in when a stricken submarine raises the distress signal. Working against the clock to save the crew trapped underwater. What we do is each individual nation is practicing and then every three years we come together for an event like this. This is the premier exercise that we have that not just rehearses but practically demonstrates every aspect of submarine escape and response from the initial distress call that a submarine may give to localization, potential salvage operations to clear access and then escape and then now the real challenge begins, which is the medical side of dealing with personnel that have just escaped. And, and we test all of that as part of the NATO exercise Dynamic Monarch. Part of that capability is NATO's submarine rescue service based at Fazlane. And this is their submersible rescue vehicle, Nemo. A 10 meter, 30 ton submarine that provides a lifeline to trapped submariners. So the sub's designed for 19 people. So we, at the moment we carry 19 times 96 hours, including the standard dive. So we could actually stay down in emergency for easily five or six days. Operated by a three-person crew. Once the submarine is located, Nemo mates with the escape hatches of the stricken boats to allow the crew to get to safety. Here we are in front of uh, our mating seat. You can see the suites of a lovely crosshair painted on us on their um, centre of their hatch, which helps us uh, recognise in our uh, bombsite camera when that comes into play, when we're perpendicular uh, to the submarine and how close we are to that fin. We don't, we won't be, we don't want to be too close to it, we don't want to strike it, cause damage to us, cause damage to them. I'm taking a wee tour of that, just moving left now. As I come up to the submarine, forward on the submarine, you can see that they put their navigation lights on for us. Very good of them, they work with uh, their rescue system all the time, so they know what we like and uh, we know that they like good Scotch whiskey. And you can see in the camera here, we're approaching the uh, rescue seat again, going back to our starting position. These cameras of course we'd be using to achieve a mate because as soon as I lose visibility of the viewport I need to catch it. You can see that that's my forward set, I can see the navigation light there, now we're seeing the uh, hatch in it. And once I lose that picture, I would change this camera to our bomb site. This is middle of the skirt looking down. Gives me my center position over that mating seat. But Nemo isn't the only rescue sub on the exercise, with Sweden having their own similar capability. Now, ARF is the Swedish Navy's only rescue submarine. And while she may look a little small, she's certainly up to the job. If I believe it or not, 35 people can fit in here. That's the equivalent to an entire crew of a Swedish submarine. We are always on a 24-hour alert. And then for Swedish submarines, we have 72 hours to be on place. See, on other systems that are that Earth can be towed, everyone else has to have a ship, put the ship, build the ships with the A-frame and everything. We just need a crane in at the harbour, so we can, we can fly, so we have the whole world. So as soon as we have launched Earth, I give her the direction where to go, and then she's free to do what's needed to actually mate with the submarine and open the hatches. It's a bit difficult finding the submarine, uh, but normally we, we, for an exercise, they have a spot where they should go. And then we go close to that spot and we talk to them on the underwater telephone and get a position. Then we move in roughly 200 meters away from the submarine 
launch Earth, and then she will go down and go forward to the submarine and mate. Locating and rescuing the trapped crew isn't where the work ends. Injuries and decompression sickness could mean that urgent treatment is required. So this is the hyperbaric chamber on HMS Bellows. It's a former saturation diving ship. So this chamber system used to keep divers for four weeks at a time. Now we have this part as the ICU chamber. Um, unfortunately, right now the equipment is um, down in the boxes, but we have a ventilator, a monitor and syringe drives. So we can have one patient here for basic ICU uh, care for up to three days. Okay, I can try. Yeah. And while physical injuries and sickness are a major issue, the stress of the situation means psychological trauma must also be considered. So you're safe here with me? Okay. okay. I think we could have a very wide range of reactions. If you've been through a disaster, it's possible that we could see some level of shock or uh, distress. <coughs> but also possible for us to see some people be very calm. You can hear a little less sound on your lower lungs. I would say a wide range of reaction is what we're planning for. Um, so in this case, I was reacting with some level of panic or concern. You know, I'm ready to get out. I've just come out of a space that I want to get away from because I'm escaping. He's trying to explain to me that I'm safe, but I have to stay. He was using some very common techniques to help me calm down some grounding techniques. He was helping me know where I was, asking me some questions to help me feel comfortable, help me familiarize my environment. The capability is tested on this exercise every three years, but it's the first time in a decade that it's been held in the colder waters in the north, with the sea of Norway providing a challenging training area. First of all, the most difficult part is to localize or find the submarine. And particularly here we're in the Norwegian waters, it's different subsea uh, conditions. The ocean floor is different and the currents and uh, all that makes it harder. Uh, and then when you have found it, it is how to, how to rescue the crew. Uh, so it's sort of a two, two pieces of difficult uh, things to, to manage. And while NATO members continually train individually, getting together on this scale to work together and share knowledge is valuable in this challenging area of operation. We are happy to work with the other NATO nations uh, to uh, be in, in this exercise and to work with other assets like uh, Swedish and uh, Norwegian submarines. It's a great experience to be here. We are both happy and very proud to be part of the Alliance. And I think uh, this exercise uh, has sent signals to the Alliance that we, we are here, we are capable, we want to participate in all parts. And of course, it's a way of getting to know each other, our weakness, our strengths, etc., and bring together the Alliance. Transmitting. The ability to respond effectively while working against the clock is vital for these teams. With lives at stake, refining and enhancing their capability could make all the difference if they're called in to do it for real. And for the submariners who spend months under sea at a time, peace of mind to know that help will be on the way if it's ever needed. David Sivils McCann, BFBS Forces News, off the southern coast of Norway. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.